Hi everyone, this is the last time you are going to see me with all this hair because today, in an hour's time, I am going to shave it all off for charity. I am raising money for the Salvation Army who in Australia help people that are homeless and help people put food on the table so I thought that was a pretty worthy cause. Don't be concerned if you see me next week with no hair because that is why. One of my most popular videos shows a Dutch door spread set up with a bit of a difference because each page creates a new layer in the picture and hides a storyline. I had a lot of fun creating this Dutch door layer so I thought I'd create another one and see if I could improve the technique. This setup is for those that want to challenge themselves to making a more creative setup that has a real wow factor. I'm Ruby from the Useful Journal and I like creating journaling spreads that use all sorts of mediums ranging from painting to washi tapes to even doing pop-up pages. I also review dot grid journals for bullet journaling. I find these setups work best with around five pages because this allows enough pages for you to develop your story along with having enough pages for your monthly setup, so your calendar and your tracker spreads. Of course everyone's got different types of setups they do in their month, so you might only do three layers or you could do I think I last time I might have done six or seven layers but they become very narrow so there's less you can do with them. After the Dutch door spreads I then include my daily spreads or you, if you use weeklies that's where you put your weeklies. I don't use the Dutch door spreads for that because they've been cut down it doesn't work as well in that space. Like last time I did a Dutch door setup, I began my process by doing some sketches of the layouts in Procreate. Procreate is a drawing app for iOS devices and there's probably equivalent for Android devices. I like starting this way because I can simulate how the pages of my journal will appear by using the layers in Procreate. The trick to these Dutch door pages is that there has to be an element that will show even when the trimmed down pages in front of it are closed in front of it. But you also don't want to show elements that will give away your story. In my case, the element that was going to show even when pages, all the pages were closed was the forest, the trees. If my fox or my rabbit showed above the cut of the next page, then I needed to make sure that those trees concealed the fox or the rabbit that was showing on the page behind, so that when all five pages were closed, all you could see was the trees. When I was working in Procreate, the advantage, the way you achieve the layered effect is by filling all the elements and the page that's going to be on the layer in front and that way you can simulate what the page is going to look like. The rest of the page remains transparent and that's the bit that's above your cut line and so you will see through to the layer below and see the elements that are showing through on that page. Your final very short page is basically your front page and that introduces your characters. They're not hidden on that page so I mean you don't need to show your characters on that page but you just need to think about how you're going to introduce your story. In reality I could have just put trees on that page like just shown a forest and not introduce my characters at all so that they're completely hidden until you see the next page. It's totally up to you. I'll just add here that it doesn't necessarily need to be a story. Last time I did a Dutch door setup like this, I did a series of backyards. You could always see the tops of the fences, but you could only see what the dogs were doing once you had turned the page. 
The front page showed a dog looking through a hole in the fence. Once I had finished layouts in Procreate, I did a small test run with some scraps of paper just to see that it would work in practice. And it did, it worked. I decided to use a stamp set with foxes and rabbits. Because I've had issues with ink in most journals, I have to say, ink showing through, maybe not straight away, but sometimes after a few months, it would show through later, um, either mostly ghosting, but sometimes bleeding through. So if it was on a separate bit of paper, I used stamp ink. But if it was going directly on my page, I colored the stamp with my Tombow marker, just a black Tombow marker, and then stamped on the page with that. I also used a set of tree stickers that needed trimming down because I had received a faulty set and couldn't be bothered getting them replaced and they had been cut incorrectly, so I had to trim them all to make them look all right. Uh, so I used them and I used a piece of decorative paper that had tree pictures on it and cut around, fussy cut around those to get a tree shape. And I also used a set of rub-ons to fill in some of the small gaps. I used a Pigma Micron pen to draw black outlines. And finally, I used a new set of cast colored pencils that I received for Christmas. And these were a little bit different because the cast pencils have no wood. They just have the color. Um, and so I just wanted to try them out, so I used them. Even though I had done a Dutch layout like this before, and I've done several Dutch door layouts, I delayed and hesitated so much making my first cut because I was so worried that my tree on the second page wouldn't conceal the things it needed to conceal on the page below. But in reality, if I'd cut it incorrectly and it hadn't quite worked, I could have always just stuck an extra tree on from a separate bit of paper and covered it up anyway. Like everyone that does creative things like this, there's always a little bit of hesitation until it actually gets done. You have to work backwards so you have to start with the last page of your story which is a full page and this is so that you get your cover up working correctly so the back page in my case was a full page with just the top 30 millimeters showing some trees part of the fox's head and the rabbit's ears Below that, you can use as much of the page as you like to, to fill out your story, remembering that you do probably need to keep some space to do your journaling spreads because that's what this is for in the end. On the second page, the trees are placed with the tops of the trees in the top 30 millimeters, but we're going to fussy cut around those trees to show some of the layer below. So those tops of those trees need to be placed so that they cover anything like my rabbit or fox on the page below. The next 30 millimeters, so 30 millimeters to 60 millimeters from the top of the page, has the bottom of your trees and perhaps some of your character, in my case the fox. Make sure that only a small amount of your hidden features appear above that 60 millimeter line because that needs to be covered by the next layer and you don't want to have something going right across that is difficult to conceal. So you'll see that the line of ground with my rabbit hole in it is always just below my 60 millimeter line from the top of each page. I continue this process for all five pages. The third page, you've already got uh, 30 millimeters at the top that's um, 
been cut away previously. The next 30 millimeters is going to be fussy cut around the tops of your trees and the next 30 millimeters is going to have to be concealed by the page in front of that. So the top 90 millimeters of that page. The next page, it'll be the top uh, 1,200 millimeters, so 12 centimeters of that page that we'll, you'll be working with. You also need to think about what you're going to do with the reverse side of these pages. Remember I've got a fussy cut line across the top of each page because I've gone around the trees and on the back that shows as a, an uneven line. So I need to think about how it will look when those pages have been flipped open. I still haven't thought this through fully and so what I've done is I've just stuck in an occasional tree to help it blend a little bit. What I wish I had done, so on my first full page at the very beginning of these spreads I've got my calendar and I had my calendar there because it was a full page and I like to have my calendar first in the month but the problem with the calendar is that I then get bits of the calendar showing when I flip the pages over in front of it because all the pages are cut down. What I sh probably should have done was do my title page there and just have January and, and have trees around it and then it would have looked like a forest on the left hand side as well. I've done an example page to show you what it could look like if you did a title page on that page and then it would look quite finished even when you flipped your page. You could always just do your monthly calendar after these Dutch door spreads along with your dailies and your weeklies. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel to see more journaling ideas just like this one. I hope you enjoy the new year and have a lot of fun creating. See ya.